Hey everyone, Sergey here from UcarMedia.com, and in this quick video, tip, tutorial, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to show you how to set up the following. So right now I have this shape layer right here, and it is grabbing the width of all of these layers, but it's not only grabbing the width of all of them, but it's taken the longest width, which is, you know, not that hard to set up, and I've done that before, and in fact, we'll go over it again today, but what I want to show you is this. So obviously, if I change the size of any of these texts, it will go the shape will go with whichever is the longest. But not only that, I'll show you how to set up to where if you bring in new layers, for example, like text layer, I'm gonna create a new text layer, just type something like that, it's probably too much. And right now, I can just use a tag or like a keyword that I have, Ucra Media. If I type Ucra Media anywhere, like before it, in it, anywhere, if I type Ucra Media, watch what happens. Immediately, it takes that width and basically plugs it in into the list of all the other ones and it grabs the longest one. So then I can, you know, change the size of it. It works as well. I can do the same thing with shapes. I can bring in a new shape, just double click like this. And, uh, you know, let's play with the size of it. And in here, again, I can scale it, do this. Let me get rid of the last one right here. All right. So now I can tell it to grab the width of this one by just, again, using that Ucra Media keyword. I can put it anywhere, even like within a word. I can just type Ucra Media. And then when I click away, you can see it works flawlessly. So let me show you how to set this up using expressions in After Effects. All right, so we are in After Effects. And for this example, we have a very basic setup, just four text layers, but do notice that each text layer has a keyword Ucra Media. So that's important. So next, what you wanna do is create a shape layer. You can either use a rectangular tool here, but I'm gonna use SmartRect. It's a tool I worked really hard to create. It's super handy, it's, you know, I use it every day. So what this thing does, it creates a shape layer with a lot of different tools. In fact, you should definitely check out the promo video for it. The link to it is at the bottom of this video, but I'm gonna create a shape layer that has anchor point in the center, like this. So now we have a new SmartRect shape layer. And if I select this, press E, I can see all the properties that it has. You know, we have X by itself, Y by itself, we have anchor point options. You can put it anywhere you want to and all kinds of different stuff. But I'm going to select this X size and hit S twice to solo it. So we're only going to be working with this. I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and then click on this um, stopwatch to create an expression. And in here, we're going to type our code or our expression. So we're going to start out by typing a variable. Now, don't overthink this. Variable is just a made up English. doesn't really mean anything until you assign something to it. And it can be a text, like a letter. It can be a... A word it can be multiple words as long as you keep it as one but i'm going to use a word keyword again made up and this thing is going to be we're going to place or hold a keyword called ucra media in this variable so we're going to type ucra media now you might be wondering hey why did you put double quotes around ucra media well the reason why we do that that's how we convert text into a string i know it's a complicated word basically that's how we tell the computer that whatever we type in double quotes is basically just a simple plain text. Don't overthink it. It's just a text. In other words, computer, it's not a keyword. It's not a method or a function. It's just a text. That's all that is. So next we're going to create another variable. We're going to call it width list. And we're going to tell it to be an empty container or an empty array. Now, array is just a I guess coding language, just a, it's just a container. Think of it, it's just a, it's a container that holds different items, different lists, different things. You can hold numbers, you know, letters, text, all kinds of stuff, objects. It's just a way where we store things. You can store like 22, 33, just anything with a comma, right? But for right now, we're gonna leave it blank. It's just gonna be an empty container, an array, an empty array. So we're gonna use that later on. So next we're gonna create a for loop. We're just gonna type for, and in parentheses, we're gonna define three statements. So for loop is just a, a way for us to run code multiple times for certain conditions. So I want to, let's say, grab or run a code based on the information from each layer multiple times, and then stop it when it reaches the amount of layers that we have in this composition. So that's what the for loop does. Basically, we can run the code multiple times, and then we can create a condition that stops it. So Let's define those three statements. The first one is just we create a variable. We can, it can be anything. It can be a letter. It can be a word. But we're going to say I, just a letter, and we're going to tell it to be something. We're going to tell it to be one. Now, what this first statement means, it's basically saying, hey, this is the starting point of the loop. That's where we're going to start. We're going to start at one. Now, if I would have placed something like five, 
we would start at five, six, seven, eight, or if I would have said 10, we would have start, you know, we would start at 10, 11, and so on. But our starting point is going to be at one. So we're going to be looping starting at one, two, three, and that's it. So that's what the first statement is. I know I'm probably over explaining this, but I, I do want you to get this. So the second statement would be the condition. And what that means is this, it's like a trigger when you want the loop to stop, right? So it starts at one and it goes two, three, four, forever. So at some point you want for it to stop. So that's what the second statement is. It's just a condition that determines when this thing will stop. And in here, here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say, I just keep running this until I is less or equals, less than or equals to the number of layers we have in here. Like keep doing one, two, three, four, five until you reach the amount of layers that we have in here. And we're just gonna type this path. We're gonna say this comp and then num layers. Basically this English right here gives us a number and the number is five. I can prove it to you. So let me get rid of this for right now. We're just gonna type this comp, this composition, and then we're gonna say num layers. So when I click away, you can see it gives me five. And that's what we get here. Now, if I duplicate another layer, you can see it's six. So you get the point. All right, let me undo all of this stuff. So that's the second statement. So the first one determines the starting point of our loop. Second statement is the condition when we want for this to stop. And the third one is how we want for this loop to execute. In other words, do we want to do it like every every line, like one, two, three, four, or do we want to skip a line, maybe like one, three, six, and so on? So in here we would say I plus plus. Now you can say equals I plus two and it will skip and so on. So, but what this does, it basically is going to do this. It's going to do one, two, three. It's going to incrementally increase by one. That's all that is. So after we defined our three statements, next we want to write the code that we want to execute in a loop. So to do that, we're going to create a, an open curly bracket first and then press enter. And it should have done this. You should see the closing a curly bracket. So if it didn't do that, make sure you insert that in there. So between those two curly brackets, it's what we call code block. It's just a way for us to run multi lines of code as one code or as one line. It's just a code block. That's how we store a bunch of things. So this loop is going to execute whatever code we type in here. So let's do that. We're going to create another variable. We're going to call it layer path. And basically we're going to write a path to a layer. Now it's going to be very generic because it, that layer will change based on the number. So we're going to type something like this comp, and then we're going to use a method called layer. And in here, in parentheses, we would normally either refer the name of the layer or point to the index value. So you can either type a number or the name. Well, but here's the thing though. I want for the loop when it's one, I want for it to re reference the index one of the layer and then run all of, the, all of the text and then go back to the top. When, then it will change to two, right? And then it will go to the second uh, layer and uh, you know do the whole text or the whole code and then three and so on. So I don't want it to be locked into a specific layer. In other words, I don't want to just say one or layer three or layer whatever. I want to say I. Now get this, I know for loop is complicated, but this is important. The reason why we say I, because I changes with every loop. In the first loop, I is one. So that's why it's gonna go, you know, do all this code in the first layer. But then in the second loop, I changes to two and it'll gonna, it's gonna go to the second layer and so on. And then it's gonna keep doing that until the condition um, triggers something to stop it, which means until it reaches to a number of layers, we have five and then at five, it stops. I know, it's a tough one. It took me a while to get for loop, but just hang in there. Okay, so we did that. We have a path to a layer based on what loop we're in. And then we're going to define We'll create another variable called layer width. We're going to say layer width. Again, made up English, we're going to assign something to it. So we're going to use layer path, this variable that we have already defined. So we have, we, we are pointing to a specific layer, okay? And then we're going to say, all right, from that layer, we want the width of that layer. That's what this layer width will hold. Now, to get the width of a layer, we have to use another method called source rect at time. You've probably seen a lot of tutorials on this. So just type source rect at time. And at the end of it, we can reference either width or height, right? We can say, give us the height and it'll give us the height or give us the width and it'll give us the width. So all this English right here really just equals out to a number. 
which is the width of the text, right? It's gonna go through one of them. All right, so that's good. So we have determined like the path of a layer, then we determine the width of the layer. But next, what we wanna do with each loop, with each layer that it goes to, we want to grab the text, look at the name of the text, take the keyword and search to see if the keyword is in that text. And if it finds it, then do something. And if it doesn't find it, then ignore it. It sounds complicated, but that's where if else conditional statement comes in. If the statement we type inside of if else conditional statement is true, then go to code number one. And if it's false, go to code number two. And I know I'm over explaining this, but some of you need to hear this. So let's type this out. We're gonna say if, and then in our parentheses, we're gonna define a condition. We're gonna say, if, and then we're going to refer, we want the name, right? Make sure this, yeah. So we're gonna select the layer path because we wanna to point to a layer and then we want to point to a specific property called name. So basically we're saying, hey, now we're in this loop, we got this layer, we are pointing to that name, it's a string, in other words, it's a text, and we can use a text method. And we want to search that text for a keyword. And to do that, we're gonna use a method called match. So whatever type in the parentheses in this method, that's what it's gonna to use to search in the name of our text layer. What we want to search for is our keyword right here, this variable, if I type it in here. So this keyword, I know it's a variable, but it really means Euchre Media because this variable holds this text. So it's gonna search for Euchre Media in the name of this layer. And so that's the condition, right? We're saying, hey, if you find keyword, do the first code block, do the code that we type in the code block. And if you don't find, we're gonna say else, do the whatever we type in the second code block. Well, in this case, we're just gonna leave it blank because we're, we don't wanna do anything. And used to in the legacy uh, expressions or the uh, JavaScript engine, you didn't have to do else. You just You could have just left it at that. But in the new expression engine, you do have to be more specific. So we do have to include this. So that's all we're gonna do for else. In other words, if this statement is true, go to the first uh, statement or the first code block and run it. And if it's false, go to the second. That's all that is. So what do we wanna do? So if we do find a layer that has uh, the keyword that we're looking for, what do we want? Well, we wanna grab the width of that layer because that's what we're interested in, right? And not only that, we wanna grab the width and then we want to push it into this empty container width um, list that we created. Remember that? It's just an empty container that's going to hold whatever we, we push into it. So now that we determined that we found it, right, then we want to write a code that goes like this. We want to reference this width list, this variable, this container, and we're going to use another or use a method. It's an array method called push. Okay, and whatever we type in here, that's what's going to send into this container. And with each loop, it's going to keep adding on into that container. So it's going to go to the first text. As it, does it have Euchre Media? Yes. And it'll send the width. The second text, does it have Euchre Media? Yes. It's going to send the width and so on. And that's how it's going to do it. So, but we want to tell, we want to kind of define where's the width? What, what do we send into it? So we want to send this layer width into this container. So we're going to put it inside of this push. I know a lot of things happening here, but if you kind of rationalize this, you can kind of make sense of this. You know, it's making sense, right? So now that we've done all of this, okay, we should have, like if we run this code, we should have this list right here. It's going to give me an error right now because uh, the, the values won't match up. Like, yeah, it's okay. But we should have the list of every, the width of every layer. In fact, I'm going to use throw just a way to debug and you can see it will list one see one comma two comma three comma comma and so on so it'll give us four i mean obviously it gives a lot of decimals here but those are the the width of every layer that we have that's that says euchre media right if i create another one you can see this changed to five but if i change the name of it to something else it will ignore it it will go back to four so i just want you to see this that that this variable right here is just a list that contains all of those values of our of the width of every layer that has our keyword in it. Okay, take a deep breath. So, well, that that's great and all that we have all of them. So, like, how is that helpful? Well, what we want to do, we want to use this list and grab the longest or the biggest value out of all of them. 
so that it always goes with the longest text. And to do that, we're going to use a method called or a function called math max. And we're going to put our keyword or a variable inside of this max or math max. And basically what this math max does, it, you can type number of values in there and it takes, again, the biggest value and it's going to only display the biggest out of all of them. Now, this would, would actually not work. Like, watch this. It doesn't work because we have to do one more thing. We have to insert a uh, spread operator, which is just three dots, one, two, three, and then it'll work. So now it works. We can actually select this, go to character, adjust our text. It doesn't matter what text we select. You can see it's working. In fact, we can create a new text. So let's type something in here. Okay. And obviously it's not reading it until we insert Ukra Media somewhere that it can be even within there. So Ukra, Ukra Media. All right, let's see. Yep, it sure does work. And you can size it, you can change anything you want. And as long as it, it is the longest one, that's what it's going to grab. But if it becomes smaller, it'll, it'll ignore. So we can do that. We can even change like the name of this. It's look, if you take Ukra Media out, it will ignore it. So that's very handy. And again, you can bring in shape layers. So you can bring in a shape layer and uh, let's see, let's grab the size, something like this. And again, doesn't work right now until I add Ukra Media anywhere, right? If I type Ukra Media, all of a sudden it sees it. Now you might be wondering, that's great and all, but how do we add like a space or like a margin, like some spacing here? So you can add on to this. You can say, hey, take that plus 100 pixels. There you go. And when you do that, it's going to add 50, 50 to both sides, which equal, equals up to be 100. And so it will always maintain that. So that can come in very handy. And that is it. But until next time, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.